So in this question, we have Skybound Airlines, and they have two different divisions, right? They have the passenger airplane, where they transport passengers all over the world, and then they have the cargo division, and this is where they're moving around all your Amazon boxes that are getting shipped to your door, right? So ultimately, what this question wants us to do is figure out which uh, division performed better using the return on investment metric. And that formula is just net income divided by invested capital or average invested capital. So return on investment, it is a type of profitability ratio. And ultimately, they just want us to figure out which division is more profitable for Skybound Airlines. So when we're looking at what we need here, we just need net income or operating profit is what they give us here. And then the investment can also be average invested capital, right? So take what the question gives us. Ultimately, we just need to divide operating profit by investment for each division. So let's go ahead and calculate the ROI for each division. So for passenger, we'll take $40,000 of operating profit divided by investment of $250,000. That means the return on investment there is 16%. Same calculation for cargo. We'll take operating profit of 50,000 divided into investment of 500,000. And that gives us an ROI of 10%. So which one do we want? Well, a higher ROI means the division performed better than a division with a lower ROI. So passenger, they're the winner there. And that means the correct answer is going to be the passenger division with an ROI of 16%. So if you recall, we also talked about residual income in the lecture. And residual income is another uh, measure we can use to assess which divisions performed better than others, right? But the benefit of using residual income is that gives us a dollar amount because ROI, that's always going to be a percentage uh, amount, right? So for residual income, we have the formula. Now, it's not one for one what they give us in the question, but they do give us enough information to calculate residual income for each entity, right? So let's go ahead and calculate residual income for passenger and cargo and see if we get to the same result of passenger performing better. So our first step is to calculate that required return. So for passenger, that's going to be the investment amount of 250,000 times the external borrowing rate of 6%, and that equals 15,000. So if we subtract that from operating profit, that means residual income for passenger was $25,000. Now for cargo, uh, our step one is going to be to take investment amount of 500,000 times that external borrowing rate of 8%, and that equals 40,000. Subtract that from operating profit of 50,000, and for cargo, that means the residual income was $10,000. So in this case, passenger delivered again with a higher residual income. And you're saying, okay, well, on the surface, it looks like passenger contributed less, right? Because they only had operating profit of $40,000 compared to $50,000 for cargo. But look how much investment was needed just to generate that $50,000 of operating profit for cargo, right? It's almost double Actually, it is double what it took for passenger. So for passenger, it's actually more valuable because they generated a higher level of operating profit on a lower investment, right? So that is how we can use residual income to compare from a dollar perspective. If we want the percentage perspective, that is where we would go with return on investment.